Hi friends! Today I'm going to be working on something a little different than one of my project cars because today I'm going to disassemble this broken 2.5T Volvo engine. Now I got this engine about a year ago already and it's broken because it's completely stuck. It doesn't want to turn around anymore. And as you can see, it's just down to the short block now because I already reused the cylinder head and the oil sump. But I thought it would be pretty fun to disassemble it today and find out what's actually causing the problems. Now I do want to completely strip this engine down. So I'm going to remove the pistons of course because we want to see what's wrong with the engine. And I also want to remove the crankshaft and split these two parts of the short block. And I'm going to remove the oil pump and these oil sprayer thingies. I just want to remove everything. So maybe we can reuse some parts and we can have a better look then. Now, some of you may be wondering why I'm not just working on my Volvo 850R project this weekend, since I started preparing that car for paint last week. But the fact is that I only got one day off this week and I'm not going to drive all the way there, which will be five hours total to go there and drive back home just to send that car a bit more because I won't have that much time then. So I started cleaning my garage and that's actually when I found this engine because I kind of forgot about it already. And since many of you guys really seem to like Volvos, I figured you probably wouldn't mind if I took you along on this little project. Now that all of these useless parts are out of the way, I'm going to remove the pistons. And like I said, the engine's stuck, so I won't be able to reach every single bolt of the pistons. So I'm just going to remove the ones I can reach, and then hopefully I can turn it then. Oh, and to remove the pistons, you're going to need this weird 10 millimeter socket. I don't know if it has a specific name. Please tell me in the comments if it has. Now these bolts are always torqued down pretty hard and I'm pretty weak. <laughs> so I'm gonna use a breaker bar to remove them. Makes life so much easier. I'm really hoping that these pistons all wanna come out as well. And yes, I tried doing it with a ratchet, but I couldn't do it because it looks very easy now. Bolts are out. Now let's remove the end cap. All right. Now, even though I may not reuse these pistons ever again, I'm going to make sure that I number these so that they don't get switched up because you do want to keep these end caps together with the con rod or tits too. Just like that. Now let's try and tap this piston out carefully. Oh yes, it does want to come out. And there's piston number one. Now these con rod bearings do not look good. Look at the damage. Now I'm going to remove the rest as well. You know, I actually find it really fun to be working on one of these engines again, because I actually learned most of my engine work by working on these white block Volvo engines. Hmm. So this bearing looks a whole lot better than the one I just removed. And by the way, I am getting rid of these bolts cause they do stretch when you torque them down. So you don't want to reuse these and get some new ones when you're rebuilding an engine. This 
these end caps really stuck. All right, let me try to wiggle it out using the bolt. Yeah. And there it is. Look at this bearing. Well, that's bad. I feel like this engine has had some problems with oil pressure. I am afraid that this piston's not going to come out because it doesn't quite fit. So I gotta try and turn the engine a little bit. So hopefully it will turn now. All right, take two. You know what I do like about these engines? That they're not wet liner engines like the previous two I did. So now I don't have to use a bolt to make sure the cylinder sleeve stays in place. And there's number three. Well, it's number one, but the third one I'm removing. That's just really bad, man. It has melted or something. The pistons itself do look really good. All three of them till now. And of course, since the bearings are so damaged, the focus. Yeah, <laughs> the crankshaft's really damaged as well, but of course I'm going to remove it anyways. But I'm really happy that this engine does want to turn now, because that will make it a bit easier to remove these remaining two pistons. By the way, you really know that you're enjoying your summer when it's super hot and sunny outside and you're just inside working on an engine. No, just kidding, I do really enjoy doing this. On the other hand, I've been wanting to do this for so long and I really forgot about it. And I'm really happy that I finally get to do it now. I love working on engines, I should do this more often, but I'm now really busy with just welding and restoring and stuff. And there's number four. And these look super bad as well. So I think only the bearings from piston number two still survived. <laughs> All right, piston number four, let's go. I'm starting to get really excited and I'm really excited to see what the crankshaft will look like. I love looking at broken things. It reminds me of myself. <laughs> I shouldn't be standing so close to the door, this is annoying. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. This is the easiest way to remove end caps, I think. Because they do come off quite easily when you wiggle them around a bit. Beautiful. Pistons are out and now I can move the crankshaft very smoothly. I'm sorry for not wearing gloves, but it's a bit hard when filming. I don't want oil to get into my camera. But as you can see, there's a whole lot of residue from the bearings on the crankshaft itself. But I can get it off like so. So I think I'm going to take it to a machine shop later and ask if they can still fix it by polishing it. Now, like I said earlier, I feel like the problem of this engine is that it didn't have oil pressure. And I think I've also found the problem. And that's these little rings. Wait, let me get some original ones and then I can show you. Now, these are the oil seals that are currently installed. And as you can see, this one's already broken. So that's one problem. But that's not the only problem because I got an original set and the seals that were installed were way too thick. This is what's supposed to go in there. I don't know if you can see it on camera, but that's a really big difference. And this one is really weird because there's an original one in there, but under there is another seal. Why are there two seals in there? I think that's the problem. I don't know for sure. Please let me know in the comments if you think it's something else, but I think I found a problem now. Sorry, I forgot to show you, but this one's way too thick as well. Because this is the original one. It's probably hard to see on camera, but you can clearly feel the difference. 
Well, you can see how it sits in there. This is what's supposed to be in there, not that. But anyways, now that I've removed the pistons, I'm going to put my gloves back on and I'm going to remove the oil squirters and this oil pump. And the oil squirters are right there and they're attached with one 10 millimeter bolt. Now, I actually never make random videos about little projects aside from my big project cars. So please let me know if you do like this or if I just should just stick with my big restoration projects. I do think this is kind of fun, but I think it's more important what you guys think. And there it is, let me show you. There's one oil squirter. I believe that's what it's called. Maybe I sound weird now, but I'm gonna go and remove the other four. I feel like it's easier to get them out from the underside. Well, it's the top side, but the engine's upside down. But there's number two. Last one. So after I've removed the oil pump, I'm going to put the engine on the floor, I think, because I think it will be a bit easier to split these two parts when it's on the floor, because sometimes you gotta hit it pretty hard to come off, because it gets a bit stuck. And I don't think that's very easy on an engine stand. All right, this engine has magically transported itself to the floor. Just kidding, I asked my neighbor to lift it for me and put it on the floor. So now I'm just going to remove this part of the engine stand and then I'm going to remove the intermediate section so I can go and pull the crankshaft. Now, let me give you a close up look. To split these two parts of the short block, you gotta undo all of these small bolts and these big ones so i'm going to start with the small ones and going from the outside to the inside and i'm going to do the same order for these big bolts but like i said first i'm going to remove this piece because it's connecting the two parts of the short block this wasn't really handy of me i should have put this through that hole but this works i guess <laughs> now i am really hoping that i can get these big bolts off myself because they're probably torqued down pretty tightly and otherwise I'll have to go and call a friend but I'm all alone here today so <laughs> then I'll have to wait for a sec but maybe I can do it myself probably not and there it is All right, moment of truth. Let's try to break these big bolts loose. All right, that does seem to work. That's amazing. Okay, let's go. <coughs> that 
that's pretty tough, but it genuinely makes me happy that I can do this on my own. You know, things like these are always my biggest difficulty because I'm just not that strong. So you got to be smart and use a breaker bar, but sometimes I'm still not strong enough just to keep the engine in place while turning it. But I am really happy that I feel like I can do a whole lot more than I always think. All right, now let's see if I can split these parts. Yay, and there's the crankshaft. That's all the parts. And of course it won't be a very big surprise, but these crankshaft bearings are quite damaged as well. Now to sum it all up, it seems like it's mainly the bearings and of course the crankshaft itself that got a bit damaged. Now, like I said, I think I'm going to take it to a machine shop and see if I can get it polished still, because I don't know for sure but the pistons itself look pretty good still because these piston rings don't look too bad these aren't saturated i don't know what you call these in english but i think you know what i mean but yeah i think that's pretty interesting to see i've never seen such bad bearings before but please let me know what you think about the state of the pistons i am going to keep these because maybe they will be of good use one day but um yeah now these cylinder walls still look really good i hope you can see this but you can still see the honing lines i guess that's what you call it and this is all nice and smooth so i think this is still saveable <laughs> And now that I got this entire short block disassembled, that's it for today. Like I asked earlier, please let me know if you like these kinds of videos. I'm also thinking about rebuilding one of these engines soon. So if you're interested in it, please let me know and stay tuned. Next week I'll be back to work on my Volvo 850R project again. So please stay tuned for that as well. For now, thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And I hope to see you next time. Bye.